Hello everyone, welcome back. Now in this episode, we are going to learn about AWS Lambda monitoring. Now as you all know, there are multiple ways that we can invoke a Lambda function. I think you guys can see my screen as well. Uh, so there you can invoke a Lambda function synchronously, meaning that once you invoke the Lambda function, then whatever the client application or the caller who invokes the Lambda function will wait until the response is returned back to them. Good example would be an API gateway invoking a Lambda function. You can connect a Lambda function to an API gateway, right? This is kind of a very common way. I mean, we are very much used to this pattern. So API gateway will call the Lambda function and the Lambda function uh, will do whatever the business logic. Probably it will call to a DynamoDB or a database and get the data and then return to the uh, caller, so API Gateway. So API Gateway will wait until the data is returned and once the data is returned, it will be sent back to the client. So client will also proceed after uh, the data is received. Okay. So this is uh, one uh, good use case of synchronous invocation. And next we have asynchronous invocation, meaning that uh, you know, the, whoever the client who invokes the Lambda function is not waiting until actual result is sent back. Uh, it will get the acknowledgement. Now, good example is an item added to S3, and then you configure S3 event to uh, invoke a Lambda function. So, what happens is once the item is added to the uh, S3 bucket, then the Lambda function will get triggered, and S3 event is not going to wait until the response is back uh, returned back to them. Once the acknowledgement is received from Lambda. Uh, or at least actually AWS Lambda service, not really the Lambda function, right? So Lambda function is one thing, Lambda service is this, you know, the managed service. So we have AWS Lambda service, uh, which will invoke the AWS Lambda once uh, an item is added to the S3 bucket. And then AWS Lambda will send a acknowledgement, all right, I got the event or I got the message, uh, I will do the needful. So in the meantime, uh, AWS Lambda will call the, you know, AWS Lambda function and let's say something goes wrong and it failed, then the AWS Lambda, it will do the retries. In asynchronous invocation, at least it will, it will do about two or three retries automatically. You don't have to worry about that, right? So that's asynchronous invocation. You're not waiting for the final result. And then we have event source mapping. Now it's so again a construct in AWS Lambda service. So you can connect, uh, you know, different event sources. Now Lambda supports so many event sources and these are a few of these, you know, uh, MSK, Amazon Managed Kafka, Kinesis, SQSQ, SNS, and there are like so many other event sources that AWS Lambda supports. So uh, when you connect and Lambda function with event source mapping, what happens is whenever the data is available in the uh, sources, so let's imagine, you know, some item is available in a Kafka stream, then uh, event source mapper will pull the data from the Kafka and then invoke the Lambda function. Now, event source mapper, like I mentioned, it's a construct of AWS Lambda service. So it will synchronously call the, or the pull, pull the messages and then invoke the Lambda function with, uh, with, with, with whatever the batch of records, right? Let's say when it pulls uh, the Kafka stream, it, it got like 100 messages and the batch size is also set to 100. So it will uh, invoke the Lambda function with that 100 messages. Okay. So this is the, uh, the other uh, way of invoking Lambda function. Now there could be other stuff, but these are like main three ways of uh, invoking a Lambda function. So in this episode, we are going to learn about how do we monitor Lambda functions uh, when they are invoked by synchronously, asynchronously or through event source mapping. And also we are going to discuss about different uh, alarms that we should set up in each of these cases uh, because uh, there are so many alarms available to us, you know, default alarms for each and every service, each and every uh, Lambda function as well. But uh, we don't need to listen for all those alarms. I mean, it's going to be just noise. Uh, so you have to identify what are the most important alerts uh, that you should set up for your application. And we are going to discuss, for example, uh, in synchronous invocation, now these uh, four alerts are good to have in your system. Function error rate, this will indicate if your functions start erroring out. And I guess like for any application, 
uh, this would mean whatever the intended functionality is not happening so you need to have some alert set for that right and the duration so how long it's going to take to execute the lambda function as you all know lambda is cost uh, by the duration execution time so if you have if you are increasing the duration of this uh, lambda function for for some reason uh, then you might need to get uh, notified uh, it's not maybe you are who's purposefully increasing some something goes wrong and probably this lambda function is going to into another third party service and that kind of uh, slows uh, and that is the bottleneck so this lambda is kind of uh, waiting for that response so for whatever the reason if the duration goes up uh, after a certain a threshold or so you should probably have a alarm set right so you know uh, about that and you can do the needful and the concurrent execution as you all again know uh, you can invoke lambda function concurrently so let's imagine for this api gateway use case you get uh, 100 uh, people invoking the api almost at the same time the same time so in that case lambda will have concurrent lambda invocation so you should know what is the concurrency because there are limits to it right so uh, there are like two main major limits burst capacity or the burst concurrency limit and the count level concurrency limit so the count level concurrency is applicable for all the lambda functions in that particular region by default it's 1000 so uh, you should have a uh, alarm set for the count level or the regional level as well so you know uh, you will get you will get notified whenever uh, the account level concurrency is reaching uh, closer to 1000 or so right of course these things can be increased after sending a support ticket and so on but it's important to get notified and the next one is the burst concurrency for each lambda function uh, there are some hard limits uh, meaning that uh, one lambda function can have uh, up to uh, I think this depending upon the region as well let's say if you're on north virginia also uh, you can up you can have uh, 500 lambda function in concurrently invoked instantly right uh, and uh, if you have like more than 500 requests then uh, you know that additional concurrency uh, it will take some time i think it will take a minute or so right so for that already identified you need to set up some concurrent text we'll, we'll discuss more about that i just like uh, go over that very fast uh, probably you don't understand right away uh, we'll discuss in deep what they means and the throttles right throttling is again uh, you know the lambda can't uh, get invoked for some reason and uh, hence everything all the process is kind of delayed so you need to get notified and these are like four basic uh, alarm that you should have regardless the invocation type so that's why like one through four it's also included in asynchronous invocation and as well as for uh, event source mapping of asynchronous invocation i think this is also very good metrics which is the dead letter uh, dead letter errors in asynchronous invocation as i previously mentioned you know AWS lambda will uh, do the retries itself if something is failed and i think you can it will automatically do uh, three retries after each uh, retry is like even the last retry is kind of failing then uh, lambda will send that to a uh, dlq okay so uh, when that message is sent to dlq if it is not properly sent then you are essentially losing that uh, data so you should probably have a, D a dead letter uh, q error so that you will you'll make sure whenever the data is lost you will be notified and you can take prompt action okay and then the iterator age in the event source mapping meaning that you know particularly for the services like msk kinesis where it deals with real time stream data you will get like so much of data records added to msk and also for the kinesis and the lambda function uh, will receive batch by batch through the event source mapping so when the lambda start processing if it takes more time then uh, you will get uh, in the meantime you'll get more uh, you know records right in these uh, event sources so this essentially meaning when an item is processed by the lambda um, you know what is the gap between its uh, addition between its execution right so if this gap is kind of increasing that means your lambda function is uh, running behind 
so there's a lag at the lambda function level either you have like increase the memory size or reduce the batch size i don't know like we have we, we have decide uh, what to do based on the uh, situation to get that indication uh, you need to have some alarm set for the iterate edge which is like very important now uh, these are some alarms that we should essentially have and we are going to learn more about lambda monitoring in this uh, crash course we will go over examples for each and every uh, use case so by the end of this video i think you'll have a, a good understanding about uh, lambda monitoring and as well as uh, alarms and matrices as well okay so uh, let's continue our discussion guys